Games with Niramas. I'm Joseph, I'm here with Draco, and we are excited to play Red Rising today. A game from James Degmeyer and Alexander Schmidt and published by Stonemeyer Games. And we're going to do a two-player playthrough today to check this game out. We have tried a little bit before and I hope we can bring you a good sort of insight on how the game plays and a little bit of strategy thinking and so on in the game. I'm We're not good at the game in any sense, but we are learning as we go. In this game, we have a bunch of cards. This is a card game very much um, focused around sort of building up your hand. You start off with five cards. We each have five cards to start off. And then we are trying to create a best hand we can before the game ends or until the game ends and that will score us points. Now the game, this is collector's edition. It comes with these card holders. I would use these if I were playing with several people around the table and so on. This is a one to six player game, but uh, in this, uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to use them. It's going to be easier to just handle the cards here. And you also need to help Draco out with his cards because he's like to hug the box. So I am going to play as the Mars. Now, you, what you do really is you take these, there's a bunch of these different faction tiles. You mix them up and you take one randomly. But me and Draco, we're just going to go with our standard. I'm red, Draco is green. So Mars has a special ability they all have. And I'll get more into that later on. I also have my cubes and I'm going to be the starting player. So I have this lovely little uh, crescent token now. It's really nice. All of these are, you know, metal cubes in the collector's edition. Really heavy, really nice components. Uh, now, if you get the standard edition, the gameplay is the same, of course. It's just that you get uh, plastic components instead. All right. So we start off with two characters, two cards out here on each spot. Uh, I haven't read the books, but I heard that they're really good. I will do that in the future. And so they all have like a theme to them. We have different classes basically in society and they're represented by different colors out here. So here we have a gold and elite character. Really nice also in the collector's edition with these uh, foiled gold cards. There you can see it through the sleeves even. Uh, anyway, let's get started with me. I'm going to take a look at my hand. So I have a white card. I have the magist magistrate and all cards or not all actually. Most of the cards have a deploy ability. So when you, I play them, I get an something happens, I get an effect right away when I play it. And what I then will do, if I do a lead action, which is sort of what you usually do, is then I will also pick up another card. So I will keep the same hand size, unless the effect, of course, gives me more cards in hand or less cards. Uh, but it's good to build up more cards. So first of here, Magistrate say, if I have the Sovereign token, I gain a Helium when I play this. Now the Sovereign token, uh, is this here. It's going to be passing around the players. No one has it to start off the game, but we can get it if we take a card from Luna over here. Now, by the way, you should have the cards here as a stack, but since they're sleeved and for the purposes of the video, you wouldn't see this part of the board if you have it there. I prefer to just have it on the side like that. So my magistrate here says that I can get a helium if I have that token. I don't have it right now, so that's not that interesting. Next up here, we have the Colonel Valentin. It says, move a gold from any location to directly under this card. You may gain that card if you do end your turn. So by playing him, I could just get any gold card. There's a few out here. And at any time I want, I can look through, like the cards are stacked like this to save space, but you can look through, as long as you don't change the order, you can look at these here. So this Karnas would be banished a card directly under this one. If the banished card is Mustang, the Jackal, or near, you may also choose an opponent if you do they banish one of their cards so this is a way for me to this is an attacking card basically and destroy a card for draco which is interesting there's some attacking in this game uh the howler says when an opponent tries to steal or banish your card reveal this to black then this is a defensive card so if i pick up that one later on draco might get a defensive card and Cassius over here says, gain the card directly under this one, banish Cassius unless that card is a gold. So you can swap him out for another gold. Hmm, all right. So this could be interesting here. I might do this to get that Karnas card. Uh, the Dancer is, says, gain a Helium. If you have two or more other reds, reveal them to gain two more Helium. Oh wow, you can get a lot of Helium this way. Helium is these uh, nice little tokens and they are worth three point each at the end of the game. And here's, I have two reds. This has two gain two helium. These are laborers. They're all about getting helium in the mines on Mars, I think. Uh, I think 
I will keep this and I will just try to play this, get another red, so I have three in total, play this and get a bunch of helium, that would be nice. And here I have a blue, finally, this is some kind of uh, pilot. If deployed on the Institute, advance one on the fleet tracks. So if I deploy it over here on the Institute, I will also get to move on the fleet track, which is nice. It's one of the three, it's basically three end game triggers and also big point scorers, which is the fleet track with our lovely little ships over here. Maybe they should actually be like this, so they're flying in the direction, right? You reach seven here, or if you get seven cubes onto the Institute, this is like an area majority over there, and there's like a dummy player here blocking the spot here, so you can't be in second place unless you get a three or above. They will be worth points. And also the helium, uh, if you get seven helium, if you get seven cubes on the Institute, or if you get to seven on the fleet track, if one player achieves two of those three things, the game end will trigger, or if all three things are done in a combination of players, now we're two players, so... But if you were three players, if one of us was up here, the uh, second player was up here, and the third player had seven helium, the game would end, would trigger as well, and you just finish out the round. And since I was the first player, Draco will always get the last turn. So this would help, sort of help to advance on the fleet track quicker, which is not bad either. Now there's one more consideration I need to do when I'm looking at my cards and deciding what to play, is that at the bottom of the cards, they all have a point scoring for the end of the game. And this is where the game gets really tricky, because you're balancing what you want to play but <laughs> who do you want to keep so this guy for example he has five points he's, he's worth 10 points as a base they all have a base point value so he's worth 10 but then five extra for each gold on all locations so I, if i if i'm going to keep him to the end then i want there to be a bunch of gold cards out on these four locations but that yeah i don't know if that's gonna be that great no i think i will play him i will start by playing colonel valentine now i will play him i might get him back later on we'll see so i am going to play him i think i am going to play him over here on mars you can play to any of these four locations and it doesn't really matter like i will do the deploy effect no matter where i play him what does matter is that after I played him, then I will be able to pick up a card from any of the other three. So, in like, I don't want to play him into a space where there is a card that I want to grab. That's the general rule. But this deploy effect says move a gold from any location to directly under this card. So I'm going to take Carius, Carnus out here. Going to move him under this card. And then it says you may gain that card if you do end your turn. So I'm going to gain this instead of just putting it under. I'm going to gain it to my hand. And it's going to end my turn, so that's a special ability. Usually I would have been able to pick up a card from another location and get a benefit. So by doing this, I didn't get the pickup benefit that I would have got. And you'll see that soon, but I still think it was worth it. This could be really, this could be really mean. Okay, I like that. All right, Draco, what are you going to do? So Draco, he is going to play the masseuse. This is a pink card. He, he, the effect is move the top card of another location to the top of a different location. Gain the original location bonus for that card. So he is going to play this right here. And then he's going to do the deploy effect. And he is doing a lead action, by the way. There's two main actions you can do, a lead or a scout. If you do a scout, you just take the top card of the deck put it somewhere and get the bonus from that place. And that's like if your hand is already perfect, if you don't want to change up your hand, that's a good way to do. But anyway, in the lead action here, he's moving the card of another location to the top of a different location. He's going to take Colonel Valentine here. He's going to move it over to the Institute. And then he's going to gain the original location bonus, which was from Mars, which means he gets a helium. So he's getting the bonus from where he moved the card, which was from Mars. Draco has his first helium over here and that was the deploy effect. Now he gets to pick up a card from any place and he's going to take Orion over here and again since he's picking it up from Mars he's getting a helium. So he found a way to get two heliums in one turn there, nice combo and Orion here is a pilot. It says if this is deployed on Mars, Luna or the Institute deploy one other blue from this location to Jupiter. So it's like again shuffling around if you play it to one of these three then another blue from these will be deployed on Jupiter. And that says deploy, which means the deploy effect will happen again, which is nice. All right, so that was Draco's turn. Now it is my turn again. And I'm not really sure what Draco is up to. You know, you got to keep track of what your opponents are doing. 
But I'm thinking I want another red, and there's no other reds out here. So I think I will start off by just messing with Draco. I think I will play this one here to banish the card under this one. No, wait, I need to... Oh, oh, I almost forgot about this. I have to... If it has to... It ha, I have to banish Mustang, the Jackal, or Nero. Then I make Draco... Uh, okay, so I need to find one of those. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Okay, so... I don't see Mustang, the Jackal, or Nero. So I'm going to hold on to this and see if they show up. Meanwhile, though, I'm thinking I want to get the Sovereign Token. And this was pretty good, the Masseuse. I could pick that up to get the Sovereign Token. So what I'll do is I am going to play uh, Quatus. And I'm going to play it to the Insti Institute. Because then I get to advance once on the fleet track as the deploy effect. And then I'm going to pick up this Masseuse that Draco just played. And that lets me, since it's Luna, it lets me take the Sovereign Token. This is worth 10 points at the end of the game as well. So it's really nice if you have it at the end of the game. But now I want it so that I can then play my Magistrate and get a Helium as a bonus there. And then I will get a bunch of Helium from these two is what I'm thinking. Alright, okay. That was my turn. Now Draco, Draco had a plan. And his plan is to play the Reporter. So this says, if you have more Helium than the player to your right, which is me and he does. That's why he got those two. Then he um, he will give me the reporter and he will gain the top two cards of the deck and then end his turn. So he will increase his hand size, but he will also sort of increase my hand size because he will give me a card on his turn. So I, I mean, it's going to benefit us both, I guess, but I still think Draco likes this. So it doesn't really matter where he plays this because he will give it to me anyway. He's just playing it somewhere. He's giving it to me since he has more healing than me. Uh, he's going to give it to me and he's going to draw the top two cards of the deck and then end his turn. So he's going to end up with six cards and now I have six cards as well. So Draco got two more cards. Alright. Then my turn. So now I have the Reporter. So I could do that if I get to... Uh, then I have to have more Helium. Which I probably will later on. Uh, I don't really know if I like that that much though. The Masseuse though. The Draco just played. That could help me get a bonus... Hmm. No, I, I want to play this Magistrate here, I think. So I'm going to play it. What do I want? I think I will pick up... Now, instead, I'll, I'll show you this now. I'm going to play it here. And it says, if I have the Sovereign Token, I gain a Helium. I do, so I gain a Helium. Then, instead of picking up one of these cards, I could draw a card randomly from top of the deck. Then I will roll this die to determine what bonus I get. I think I will do that because I'm looking for another red and I don't see any red out here. So I'm going to draw the top card. That was a yellow, the Hypnotist. In clockwise order starting with you, each player selects a card from their hand, banishes it and gains the top card of the deck. Oh, that's not that interesting. It's just going to let us swap cards. But okay, I will roll the die to see what bonus I got. And I got the I. Which is basically just, and there is a player aid, really nice little player aid card here, so you can just see what everything is so here. It says reveal the top card of the deck and place it, not deploy on any location. So I'm going to take this, place it somewhere, but it's, I'm not going to resolve the deploy effect. It's just going to be placed. This is the developer. Ah, green card. I don't know. I don't think Drac was that interested. Is there anything I want to block? That's another question. Like maybe I want to block something, like this protection card. I'll, I'll, I want to block that so Draco can't grab it, so I'll put it there. So then this is the top card there. All right. I think that works out. Let's see what Draco's up to. All right. Draco has decided he's going to play the conversationalist. Draco really likes to conversate. So he's going to place this somewhere and then move the top card from another location to under this card. If it is a white, you gain it. So that's his plan. He's going to play it right here. And he's going to move this card and says it's white, it doesn't go under, he gains it instead. So he got a card and now he gets to pick up a card. So all of a sudden, Draco will be up to seven in hand size. And that is interesting. Now you don't really want to go, well, I don't know. Right? There is a downside to having more than seven cards in your hand at the end of the game. Because every card over seven is minus ten points. On the other hand, if you have a card that is worth more than ten points, it's still a good thing, right? So where does Draco pick up a card now? Pick up... Cassius from over here. 
And since it's from Jupiter, he will move once on the fleet track. He doesn't want to get, you know, too far behind there on the fleet track. All right, Rakko has seven cards. My turn. Hypnotist, I don't know. Like this one here, it doesn't have a point value at the end of the game. Instead, it says, let's see if we can get some focus there. It says, banish one other card from your hand and gain the top card of the deck. If this is an effect that happens at the end of the game instead. So that could be like, this is very gambly. This is like, just get rid of a bad card in your hand and just hope that you get something good at the end of the game that is worth more points, really. So I don't have more helium. So the reporter is not really a thing. The masseuse, mm, that is a way to get an extra bonus. I'm still looking for another red because then I will do the super combo here. No reds out here. So I think I will draw from the top of the deck again. But what am I playing though? I'm still on the lookout for Mustang, the Jackal, or Nero, and those haven't showed up yet. So I'll do the Masseuse, why not? So where do I play it? I will move the top card from another location to the top of a different location and gain the original bonus. I think I will move, I will play this here. And I will move this one from the Institute to Mars, and then I will get the bonus from the Institute, which is to place my first uh, cube over here on the Institute. So I'm in the lead, well, I'm not in the lead, the dummy player's in the lead, but I'm, I'm in the lead for versus Draco. Then I get to pick up a card, but I'm gonna draw a card randomly instead. And I got a silver. You may regress once on the fleet track if you do gain two helium. Mm, I don't like that really. So this is worth 18 extra points at the end of the game if you have at least five helium, which I will have, I think, though. So that would be a total of 30 points, which is pretty good. I mean, there's like this guy, he has 40 points. He's worth 50 points in total. If we, if with only cards having core, core value of 10 points or less. So <laughs> if you're going to have him at the end, then you want to have low scoring cards as core values. But I mean, they can still be scoring a lot if, you know, with these. So this guy, like, for example, he has eight as a core value, but then 11 more if with no grace. So if I have no grace in my hand, he's worth 11 more. And if with no goals, it's 11 more. So that's uh, 30 points in total, right? So this could be a nice combo as well, I guess. If I get rid of the... Yeah, I'm planning to get rid of him. Um, okay, so yeah, I got the silver. Let's roll the dice, see what I get as a bonus. That is an X. I get to remove the top card. I banish. And when you banish cards, they go into like a banish pile, a discard pile. They might be picked up later though. There's some cards that interact with the banished cards. Is there anything in particular I don't want Draco to have? Or I could, you know, if I, if I think the other way, it could be that I want to banish like this one because I'm going to be able to get the other one out down here. And I will say, at the start, when you start playing this game, there's so many effects. I mean, I don't know, like there's so many cards, they're unique, trying to understand everything, trying to remember what everyone's doing, that's impossible. <sighs> um, so... So I don't really know, but I think this masseuse is pretty good. I think I will banish it so Draco can't get it. So this goes, this goes to the, um, because I rolled the X, this goes to the banish pile, the discard pile over there. And that's the end of my turn, right? So we'll see what Draco will be uh, doing here. Right, so Draco is going to play Cassius. And this says, gain the card directly under this one. Banish Cassius unless that card is gold. He's going to play it over here. So he's going to gain the card directly under. And this is going to be banished because this card was not gold. But that way he got this from like a place that he went to basically. And then he gets to pick up a card somewhere. And he is going to pick up this Colonel Valentine over here. So he gets to place his first cube on the Institute. So that was Draco's turn. I mean, he's doing good with his huge <laughs> hand size. Let's see what I'm up to. I still need reds. I'm still looking for ways to draw more cards or find more cards. And how would I do that? I need just I just need one red more red so I can do this and gain a bunch of helium because that would be nice for this here that's 18 points if I have at least five helium I think this is one I will keep to the end so hypnotist in clock size or order story each place selects a card from their hand banishes and gains it this is a way to sh to get more card to see more cards so let's do that and I think I'll just play it to Mars. So in clockwise order, starting with you, each player selects a card from their hand and banishes it and gains the top card of the deck. So I have to banish a card. And I don't think I care too much about this reporter. 
because then I have to give it to Draco and this basically increases both our hand size. Let's get rid of this. So I'm going to banish this. I'm going to draw, draw the top card. That's another gold. Nero. Wait, wasn't Nero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to play him on top of Nero. And this has gained a helium for each red at this location. So, the, mm, that's not a great combo. Draco has to banish a card though. Let's see what he will be banishing. He is going to banish Orion and he gets to draw another card. And now I get to pick up a card. I played this. I have to pick up one of the other ones or I can draw a random. I am going to go random again. Let's keep doing this. And that's the vlogger. So if you're further on the fleet track than the player to your right, give them the vlogger, gain the top two cards of the deck, then end your turn. It's basically the same thing as the other one we had here. Uh, so this is a way to just increase hand size for both players, right? Well, if we were four players, it would only benefit one of my opponents. So it's, I think these cards might be stronger if you're uh, more players in a way. All right, so I get to roll the die and I get a helium. Okay, that's not bad. So Draco's gonna play uh, Eo. So this says, each opponent must reveal a red. If they can't, they lose a helium. So Draco's just gonna gamble that I don't have a red. And where does he place this? I think he will place it over here on the Institute. And then each player, so he has to as well. So he's going to reveal that he has Darrow, which is a high scoring card here. This says, if you have seven or more cards, uh, at the end that you get 30 plus 10 it has 40 point card and Draco does have seven cards So he revealed that I have to reveal a red and when you reveal you just show that you have it So I'll just reveal uncle uh, Narrow here for Draco. So here Draco. I have this one. All right Then he's going to pick up a card And now I think he's gonna draw one randomly from the top. He's gonna roll the die and He got the sovereign token. Oh, that was pretty good for him. So he takes that all right so my turn. Now I can do my thing, right? Well, I need to I need to pick up EO. I need to have two reds in hand, which is fine. It's in the institute. What's the scoring on this one? It's ten plus ten for each other red. Oh wow, this goes nicely together. Minus ten if it's with a gray. Uh, I don't have any grays. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm gonna hold on to her probably for the end. But what am I going to play now? Hmm, I might play Nero then. I'm not because, yeah, if I'm going to go for a red strategy here, I don't want any golds in my hand. I, I don't know. So I'm going to play Nero. Oh, that's tricky though. It says gain one helium for each red at this location, so I could play it over here, but then I cannot pick up Eo. Oh, that doesn't work. There's so many combos in this game or like interactions between the cards. It's really, really tough. Oh, it is tough. Well, if I'm gonna be trying to hurt Draco, I now I know that Draco has that, um, what's it called, the Darrow cards. I know that Draco wants to have seven or more cards in his hand at the end of the game. So now I'm even more inclined to play Karnos to banish a card from his hand so that he goes down to six cards. So in that case, I need to play Nero first. So it's gonna look a bit weird to Draco. I'm gonna play Nero over here. Draco's gonna be like, what, why, is, why are you doing that? So gain a helium for each red. There's no reds here, I'm not getting any helium. But then I pick up Eo, which means I get to place a cube on the Institute. And now I have my cards, I have my hand set up here. I'm gonna have a nice turn next turn. And I think Draco's a bit confused over that. Let's see what he is going to do. All right, so Draco is going to play uh, Magistrate, the card that, he, that I started off with. And if he has the Sovereign token, gain a helium. He does have the Sovereign token now, so that's what he's going to do. He's gonna play it over here. Why not? He's going to get a helium as a bonus. And then he's going to pick up a card. So this says reveal the top card of the deck. Either banish it or place not deploy it on top of another location. It's not that interesting. I think we're just going to draw a random here. And he's going to roll the die. And he got the institute. Wow. So he gets to place a cube. That was lucky. All right. So my turn. Now I'm going to do my super red move here that I've been planning for. So I am going to play the Dancer. So this has gain a helium. If you have two or more other reds, reveal them, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to get two more helium. So I'm going to get three helium in total. Where do I place it though? Now this is a card that I want to get back to my hand because it will give 10 extra to EO for each red. If I'm going for a red strategy, am I? No, wait, or may no, 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 I should do this first, so Draco can't mess this up. Okay, so I'm going to play Karnas first. There's no rush with the other one. 
So I'm playing Karnas and I'm playing it on top here. It says banish the card directly under this one. So I'm going to banish Nero. If the banished card is Mustang, Jackal or Nero, which it is, you may also choose an opponent. If you do, they banish one of their cards. So Draco has to banish one of his cards, which will bring him down in hand size. He's going to banish Bondius. Bondius, all right. And now he's down to six, so he needs to find a way to get one more card for that high scoring. Then I need to pick up something. And again, am I going random? Okay, now I need to mess to check this. So this says, if you are furthest on the fleet track or tied, 23, that's 30 points. I think I can pull that off. This I want to keep for the end because this gets extra points for other reds. And it doesn't want to be with a gray. I think I can do that. This is 40 points. But then I will have to have... Other cards, core values for 10 or less. So this is 10, 7, so that would work. So then, and this is 8, so that works as well. And this is 11, if it's with no grays and no golds, so 11. Yeah, so this is a good strategy combo here. I need to get rid of this one because it's above, it's 12 points. And then I need to pick up something that is, if I'm going to keep it, I don't think I'm going to keep it. But if I did, then it would be, need to be a low scoring and not gray. They also have like on the side here, they have like this one wants to be with other reds. It doesn't want to be with grays. So that's a sort of easier way if you hold them like this, which I never do with cards. I always hold them like this, which is annoying. Uh, but then you can see easily this doesn't want to be with gray or gold. It's like an old habit. I think from when I played poker, I always did this for some reason, which I think you would do if you're left handed. People have been told, telling me this is what you normally do if you're right handed. I don't know. I am right handed. But anyway. What am I picking up? Uh, I also need to think about these. I want to move on the Institute. I'm going to grab this guy. All right. And that means, lets me put a cube on the Institute. Now, there's no card here, so you can't pick up from that space right now. All right. Draco's turn. What are you doing, little guy? Right. I'm a bit confused here. So, Draco has seven cards. I don't know if I messed up somehow. I might have messed up somewhere in the rules. Tell me in the comment section if I messed something up here. Because I thought Draco had five, he got two more, so he should be at seven, then he banished one, so he should be at six. I don't understand why Draco has seven cards. He, Draco is going to play the Fitchner over here, and it says, if deployed to the Institute, place an influence cube or, over here. So he's up to three, keeping the tie there. And then he's going to pick up a card. I might have made a mistake somewhere, I don't know. He is going to... Pick up this magistrate. It's going to give him a helium. So he has to lead there on heliums. Then my turn. Maybe I gave Draco a card somehow. Or maybe no. Maybe we actually. Because I'm at six. So I'm two. I'm one behind Draco. Which actually makes sense. Because I think Draco did two things to get another card. I only gave, did one. Yeah, that might be correct. I don't know. Now I'm going to do my red thing. So I'm going to play the dancer. And let's see, where would I play him? I want him back in my hand afterwards. So I don't want, I'm going to play him in a place where I don't think Draco will be doing. And I just realized something else. When I got the... I totally forgot this. When I got the, the uh, sovereign token, I would have gotten a helium as a bonus. I should have one more. When Draco got the Sovereign Token, his faction is he would have placed an influence. So he should have one more influence. There we go. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. So, uh, and this says also whenever you gain the Sovereign Token, even if you already have it. So like you can gain it sort of by picking up a card from Luna and you would get the effect again. So Draco could pick up a card from Luna to get, it would be the same for him as picking up a card from the Institute. And for me, it would be the same as picking up a card from Mars because I would get a Helium plus the Sovereign Token. Mm, that's interesting. I think we should do that more. So anyway, I don't think I will place this to the Luna because that will benefit Draco that way. So I think I will play it over here at Jupiter. Draco hasn't shown too much interest in the fleet track. And this says, gain a Helium. Then if you have two or more other red cards, reveal them. So I'm showing Draco that I have these two. And then I gain two more Helium. So that was pretty good. So I'm up to six helium. Not bad at all. Now I need to pick up another card, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go random here, and that's this psychologist. You may place not deploy one or two banished cards on top of what it's looking. So this is a way to get back banished cards, and you can look at these if you want to. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So anyway, I will roll the die, and I get to remove something, and I want to remove in a smart way. 
I think I'll remove this. There we go. I think that's smart. And so I have my six cards and it's Draco's turn. I think Draco is going to play this Pulse Armorer. Uh, mostly because he wants to get rid of it. It says maybe we may gain a gray from this location, but there's no grace He's just gonna play it. I think to get rid of it. He doesn't want to have it in his hand for some reason and Then what is he going to pick up? I think he might do this because you know This is the one I played earlier when you banish a card and gain the top card of the deck and he he's starting to think that I have a hand that I like So he might play this just so I have to banish a card from, from and he also wouldn't mind Banishing something from his hand. So he's picking this up and since it's from Mars He will gain a helium there as well. All right my turn uh, Do I want to bring back any card ban banished cards? I don't know I, I definitely want to pick up the dancer. I know that But what am I playing again? I, I need to get rid of these high scoring cards. I have a bunch of them now if I'm gonna get this 40, wow, that might be hard to pull off. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna do this. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna play the CEO. I play it over here. It says I may regress once on the fleet track to get two helium. So that's not bad. That means I'm up to eight helium. So I'm at one of the sort of end game triggers. If if this gets if I get this to seven or seven cubes or a total, if we both do that, then that would trigger the end of the game. All right, and then I'll picking up the dancer, which means I will move back up here. So that's why I did that. So now I have my reds. So basically these I don't want, well I could do this again, I guess. Should reveal these and get like three helium. And this could give me two helium. I, I don't want to risk it because if Draco somehow gets rid of this. So I think I will, I will keep these for the end game. And this one. And this says I need to be furthest on the fleet track or tied to get to 23 points. I need to focus more on Jupiter. And I need to get rid of these two because they are above 10 points in core value. I don't know if this strategy is going to work, but it's interesting. So that was my turn. Draco. Yeah, Draco's going to play the Hypnotist that he picked up. And I think he's just going to play it over here. And it says, in clockwise order, starting with you, each player selects a card from their hand, banishes it, and gains the top card of the deck. So Draco is going to banish something. He's going to banish Colonel Valentine. He's not that excited about that one. Then I get to do the same, or I have to do the same. So I think I will banish. I think, let's see, the hacker. The hacker in the end is pretty cool. Reveal the top card of the deck. Gain points equal to that card's core value. That could be a bunch, like 20 or something. Because we are getting close to, but no, no, I don't want to have this in the end. If I'm going to get those 40. So I need to banish one of these two that are above 10 and just hope that I draw something low. I'll, I'll, I'll banish the Psychologist and I pick up... Oh, perfect! A 10. Mess Hall Cook. If deployed directly on top of a grey or orange, move that card to the top of another location advance one on the fleet track. This gives 5 points for each grey and orange. I don't have that. I'm just gonna keep it for the end. I think the end is a bit away because, you know, someone needs to get up here or... But I'm still starting to like plan as much as I can for that end game. So, okay, so that was Draco's placement. He plays this, then he needs to pick something up. And he's gonna go random, I think. I'm just gonna check now so I don't mess up. No, he has six cards, he should have one more. And he's rolling the die. And he gets to put a card somewhere. 4D Painter. Move a card from this location to the top of another location where there are no cards with the same color as it. And this is 31 points if each of your cards are, are a different color. Ooh. That's not going to happen for me because, you know, I'm going for the, the bunch of reds, but Draco might be interested in this. So I think it's just going to put it here. Now, I might be interested in it because it has a low point value, which is kind of weird. But anyway, so he's going to put it uh, here and that was just, you know, he just placed it, didn't get to deploy. It was just a placement because of the die roll back to me. And I need to get rid of this hacker, uh, but I also need to move on the fleet track. That's pretty important. I had a card here that, yeah, I need to be furthest on the fleet track. I'm... Okay, okay, this is gonna work. I'm gonna place this over here. It says, reveal the top card of the deck. Banish it or place it, not deploy, 
on the top of another location. So if it's a good card, I can place it here and then pick it up and move Jup like do the Jupiter thing. It's an assassin. Oh, it's a five. Banish the card directly under this one. If it's a gold, place one influence on the institute. So I can like assassinate a gold. This is 10 point for each obsidian though, so I don't have any. This doesn't work at all with my. I don't want to have it for the end game. But I am going to place it here. I'm going to pick it up straight away. And since I'm picking up from here, I get to move on the track here. And I will use this to assassinate uh, a gold. And that will get me a, another influence as well. So Draco's turn. So Draco is going to play the online gambler. So it says name three colors, then reveal the top card of the deck. If it matches the color you named, gain it and banish this card. Otherwise banish the revealed card. So Draco is going to name... I, would, I don't think we've seen too many. He likes purple. So he's going to say purple, gold, and silver. Silver, gold, purple. And this was a gray. Okay. So it didn't match. Uh, if it matches. Uh, otherwise, yeah. So this is going to be banished. Okay. So he tried. All right. And he played this over here. And now it's going to pick up. Carnus from over here and he's gonna move on the fleet track right my turn so yeah he saw that I picked up the assassin so he didn't want a gold to be out here for me to just assassinate so he messed that up for me good job Draco this is not that great for me 5.3 degree and orange I don't really have that I'd rather have the 40 painters I think I'm gonna swap those and this is if deployed directly on top of a gray or orange, move that card to the top of another location and add a want one on the fleet track. So I'm going to play this on top of our orange, which means this will move to the top of another location. So I'll move it over here. And then I get to move at once one on the fleet track as a bonus there. And then I pick up this 40 painter, which will give me a helium. And this is nice here. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is this is not good for me. This is the one I wanted to be. Wait, wait, I'm gonna re I'm not gonna do that. This is for the different colors. I'm getting confused. It was Draco that wanted that, I think. Instead, I'm gonna pick up this one from the Institute, and that will let me put another cube here. Alright. Yeah, so Draco's just gonna play the gold that he picked up, the corners. Now he knows I have the assassin. But I don't think he can do that much about that. So you can sort of steer a little bit on where I'm going to play. So by playing it here, he will sort of force me to play on Jupiter, which means I will not be able to pick up from Jupiter. He doesn't want me to get too much of a lead here. He's going to play it here. It's going to banish the card directly under this one. And since that card is not one of the named cards, I will not have to um, banish one of my cards. That would have been nice though for Draco. But he's going to pick up this 40 painter. Which means he gets a helium as well there. Alright, so that was Draco's turn. And I am on my turn. I'm going to play the assassin. Uh, banish the card directly under this one. If it's a gold, I get to place a uh, marker on the institute. So that's not bad. And then I'm picking something up. And again, I want low scoring cards. I'm going to take a random. I'm going to take a random. Oh, 25. Ash Lord. Okay. Banish all blues from this location. If this banishes two or more blues, regain Ash Lord. So that's not going to happen. I don't want gold in my hands. I, I will just get rid of this, I think. First, I will need to roll the die and I can get rid of something. You want to? Well, I guess let's get rid of the assassin so Draco can't pick that up. So Draco's going to play the musician. It says move a card with an even core value from this location to the top of another location. And I think he is going to place it here. And so we're going to move a card with an even value, which will be the Howlers with 20. And it's going to move that over here. And then it's going to pick it up. So he gets to place a cube. So he is up to five. I'm up to five. And then he gets this one here. All right. So my turn. I want to get rid of this Ash Lord. I will try to, you know, stick to my strategy. I need to get rid of CEO as well, though. Okay, Musician is eight points. I do like that. I do like that. All right, so I'm going to play the Ash Lord 
Spanish, all blues. There's no blues out here. I'll just play it over here. No, no, I want to move. Yeah, I can't get a card. That's okay. This is 10 points at the end of the game. So I'm okay picking this one up. And then I'm picking up the mus musician. And that gets me the token, which uh, also gets me helium from my uh, faction bonus. All right. He's going to play Danto. This says move a copper or white from any location to directly under this card. You may gain that card. But there's no copper or whites. So he's going to play it over here. And he's going to pick up the Ash Lord so that he can move here. So he gets that one. He's kind of collecting golds now. Don't know what that means really, but. Oh, okay, so I'm going to stop. I think like these, these here I'm happy with. I'm happy with those and the musician. The musician says if the core value of each of your card is an even number, that's 32 points. That would be awesome, but I have a seven sadly. So should I get rid of the seven? No, I think I would. I, I'm not going to be able to pull up all these scorings. <laughs> I think I will, but I need to, there was something here, I was, yeah, I need to be the furthest on the fleet track, but I also want to get rid of the CEO, which means I, this effect is to regress on the fleet track to gain two helium, but I think I will have one more turn at least, so, but I don't want to pick this up again, all right, I'll do it, I'll play it over here, I'll regress once here, I get two helium because two helium is six points total, three each. And the points difference here is not that big, it's just three. So I think it's beneficial to do that. And I will pick up this, this guy because he's a max of 10. So basically for that. And then I'll also get to place a cube on the Institute, which means I have a lead here now. Um, so that is good. And now my hand looks pretty good. I mean, pretty good. Like, like I, I'm not doing this I don't have the core value like if I could switch the seven for something that is below like an eight or whatever that would be nice because then I could skip this goal as well to have the furthest on it yeah so I think that could be a goal for me and this is five for each copper and white on all locations that's not great at all so I don't know if this is smart but I think I will try to switch the vlogger for an eight or a ten if I find one later on so Draco is going to play the Howlers. Now this doesn't have a deploy effect. This is one of those cards that are just a defensive card. If I was trying to steal or ban it from him, he could reveal this block. It could be good for him to keep it. But he's just going to put it here. Um, and he's going to pick up this guy instead. And that means he gets to put... And So he's also up to six on the Institute right now. So we're very close. Well, Draco doesn't have seven helium. But if I get if I put one more on the Institute, that will trigger the end of the game. Before that happens though, like I can control that a little bit, right? So before that happens, I would like to switch this vlogger if possible for a Or this is if you're tied as well, but yeah I, I, I want to draw from here, but I'm so scared that I will get something <laughs> That doesn't match at all. Okay, I'm gonna gamble. I'm gonna try to get rid of the vlogger but this is so bad if I'm playing it. If you're further on the fleet track, then you know basically yeah, I don't want I want I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna play this. And I'm gonna pick up a random card. And not, I'm not gonna the deploy effect will not happen. And that's a 19. If you have the summon token, reveal the top card of the deck and place it on another location. This is worth 11 extra points if I have the summon token, which I do have. But it's a 19. I can't have a 19 in my hand if I want to score this. So I need to get rid of that. <laughs> he's going to do a... This is the first time we will see this. But he's going to do a scout action. So he's going to draw the top card. And so you mainly do the lead action. But once in a while you do the scout. Reveal the top card of the deck and place it on any location. It's not deploying. And then you gain that bonus from that location. Uh, so this is Lorne. Which is a gold. Let's see. Did Draco have anything that... He... No. I don't think so. And it says, if the card directly under this one is a gold, banish that card. It's a 15 if it's the only gold. So, um, yeah. He's going to place it over here. Because that lets him steal the sovereign token. And when he, he's doing that, 
then he gets a place in influence, so he's up to seven. So he's on seven now. He's not in the lead. So I have seven here. He has seven. So any of us could trigger the end game by doing the other one, basically, at some point. But it's my turn, and I need to get rid of the seer. And I think the game is very close to an end here. So I think what I need to do is... Well, it's either gamble on finding a 10 or an 8. Or just make sure... I mean, I've been doing the whole strategy here. I'm making sure I have cards that have a core value of 10 or less. I don't want to mess that up. So I think I'll pick this up. So what I'll do is I'll play the Seer. Now I don't have the Sovereign Token. Oh. Oh well, and I'll, I'll pick up the vlogger again then. Or do, I, or do I want to end the game? No, no, I can't do that. So I'll picking up the vlogger, which means I move up here. Which again, if I'm tied, then that's this is 30 points. That's not bad. It, it does mean that the musician doesn't work though. Oh, I don't know. All right, Draco's your turn. And Draco's going to do another scout. He seems to be happy with his hand. And that's Surgeon. Oh, that's a zero card. It's five for each gold. Interesting. This is you may banish non-gold from your hand and gain a banished gold. So if you have this card, then you're just trying to get all your hand gold. All right. So he places this somewhere. Mm, I think he's placing it over there. And that means he is doing the Jupiter effect. So he's moving up here. That is a four point swing that's more than getting a helium so so my turn and I could end it now by adding a cube to the institute and I think I might do that I just well I could get to zero but that would lose me like this card is worth third no because Draco pulled the hand but if I get sort oh Oh, so this is 40 if I have, but zero and I don't have any gold. No, 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 I don't want to have any golds. Oh, my brain is hurting from this game. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I need to move on the track. I need to move on the Jupiter track. That's what I need to do. I mean, this is pretty bad. It's 10 points, but there's five points for each copper and white. There's only oh, there's one white. So, I mean, I could do, instead of keeping this, I could just get rid of it. But this, no, it fits the, like, it's a below 10 or 10 or below, and it's an equal number, <laughs> a very even number. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if I give up this, because I'm not going to score it anyway. Yeah, yeah, let's do that then. Because I'm not going to score it anyway. So I'm playing it here, it doesn't trigger because I'm not further on. I'll take the zero, which feels weird, but... Well, that actually lets me pull up here. All right. Oh, I don't know. This is tricky indeed, this game. You could really like go back and forth in your thoughts and you know, you gotta decide at some point, like what are you going for? Just stick with it. Okay, I think Draco's gonna end the game because I will not get a second turn. He, is, I started. So I think Draco sees an opportunity here. He's going to scout Invictus. He's going to place this so that he gets to seven helium. He's going to place it here and that gets him to seven and he has seven over there. So two of the three is fulfilled by one player, which will end the game. Uh, I'll trigger the end game. And since I was the first player and, and Draco's happy, I mean, he has a sovereign token when he's ending here as well. So yeah. All right. Oh, that's, you know, there's a lot of planning and thinking and back and forth. And, you know, Crack was a smart little dragon. He he probably has this figured out, I would guess. So here I am, Niramas, and we have Draco. And we're going to start off with effects. So if you have, like, cards that have an endgame effect instead of having an endgame scoring, then this would happen now. But I don't think any of us have that. Or actually, I do. I didn't realize that. I have this one here. You may treat this card as if it's any other color in addition to gray, which of course I'm going to treat it as a red. So it's going to be like I have another red. And this says I can gain any one banished gold, but I don't want a gold in my hand. Let's see, what do I lose if I get a gold? I lose 11 points from him. And no, the golds are like high value as well. 
I, I need to keep below 10 or below, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that effect. I don't care about that, which I don't know. <laughs> All right, so none of us are doing these. Then we're going to do the card, and we're going to do them basically the whole card value. So let's just start with myself and just go through it here. So, so this Danto here, he's worth 10. And then five for each copper and white on all locations. And there's only one white out here. So he's worth 15. I wish this thing was uh, split into more sections because, you know, there's, there's a lot of counting here. So, okay, so that's 15 for him. Then this is eight plus 11 if it's with no grays. And he is a gray, sadly. I think I forgot about this. Yeah, I did. All right. So yeah, it is what it is. So he, but I don't have a goal at least. So he's uh, 11, he's 19. Yeah, I forgot about the gray. Oh, so much to keep track of. Then this one says 10 plus 10 for each other red. And I'm gonna, uh, this can be counted as red. So I have three other reds, that's 30. No, come on, this is also minus for a gray. Oh, I messed up so bad. <laughs> I messed up here. Okay, so basically this doesn't count then. So it's a 20, it's a 30 card. It's not bad, but oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is 40. If with only cards that have core values of 10 or less, I do have that though. Plus 10, so it's a 50. So then this one here is 32. If the core value of each of the cards is an even number, which they all are, plus 8, so that's a 40 card. And then finally, this is a 0 and 5 for each gold. Yeah, I, I don't know. So that's 90, that's 120, 130, 140, 154. And again, you know, we have, it's, it's, it's really tricky. I don't understand why they didn't make this bigger. Or, I don't know. It would better be easier to count that way. So that was my hand. That was my card. So then we have Draco. And he doesn't have a perfect hand either, I think. But he has Alfrun, which um, he was waiting to try to find Nero or Joffre. Now, he knew that I banished Nero. He was trying to find a way to get back Nero back because... If he plays Alfred on top of Nero or Joffru, or not on top, but on this location, he would regain Alfred, and then he would get this would be worth 10 plus 10 if he has Nero and 10 if he has Joffru. So this could be 30, but this is only 10 right now. Then he has this one here uh, 16 points if you have the most influence on the Institute or Tide, and he does have the most. He has seven. So this is um, a 30 card. Then Darrow, uh, if he has seven or more cards, which he does have, so then this is worth 40 in total. Then Magistrate, if he has at least three Helium, three Influence, and three on the fleet track, he does have all those, so that is the 15, so that's 35. Then a 40 Painter, if each of his cards is in a different color, they are, that's what he really made, tried, made sure happened there, so that was 40. And then Ash Lord, um, 25, and then 5 for each blue. And he has one blue, and 5 for each banished blue. So then we have to go into the banished pile. So this comes into play. I don't know if, I think it was one. Yeah, there's one banished blue here. So basically he gets 10, so this is a 35 as well. All right. And the final one here. Oh, he did have an effect. You may treat this card as having the same name as any specific character, but it didn't matter. Um, the names didn't matter. And this would be 17 with a gray, but sadly Draco couldn't find a way to pick up a gray to have at the end of the game. So it's only 13. So total Draco, let's see, that's 75. Well, that's 100. That's 70 plus 8. That's 150, 180, 190. Uh, 203, so Draco is doing a lot better there on the cards than I am. Then we look at the fleet track, we both uh, are at the 10 spot. In the um, Helium I have 11, so that's 33, Draco has 7, that's 21. Uh, Draco has the Sovereign token. And then we look at this, so it says here as well, the, the one that has the most in the Institute gets 4 points for each cube. Second one gets two, and third one gets one. And since there's a dummy player, you need to get at least three because the ties are friendly. So Draco has seven times four, or 28. I have six times two, which is 12. So Draco is doing so much better than me. So Draco has 234, 
272 and I had 197 199 209 so Draco wins big here 272 to my 209 and the rule book says that 300 is a good score and I haven't been there yet <laughs> I need to play this game more and as you can see there's a lot to keep track of it's just a you know it's a card game you have your deck of your hand of cards but I mean getting all these to match together I mean I messed up huge here I thought I had everything under control and then I had two cards and maybe again I should be holding them like this it would I would have seen that don't have a gray and I had a gray that was 20 points it wouldn't be enough to beat Draco and I mean this zero I don't know if this was worth it with my hold this was the uncle narrow strategy I did here <laughs> having low scoring cards to get those 40 but I mean I'm if I instead had had like instead of having zeros and eights if I instead had some 20s you know I would have beaten that like 25 I would have beaten that zero that 40 anyway yeah I think so so learn by my mistakes and hope you had fun watching this full playthrough of Red Rising I am exhausted uh Draco looks uh, happy though he's a winner congratulations Draco you did good and you can feel proud of yourself. And thank you so much to everyone who's been watching. If you enjoyed this playthrough, if you like what we're doing on the channel, then I will ask you to like the video down here, press the like button, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to support us, go check out Patreon. We have a Patreon page where you can support us. That We really appreciate all the support we can get. These are tough times, so any support is really helps out uh, you know, in the everyday life for us here. So thank you so much. All the links are down in the description to the Patreon and so on. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening, morning, or whenever you're watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Be like Draco. Follow board games with Niramas on Facebook at BGW Niramas.